Welcome to episode 23 of SpaceX in the News. Today we're going to go over a handful of things. The first being the Falcon Heavy launch, we'll debrief that. The second being Starlink and some drama between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Grr. Three, we'll take a trip down to Boca Chica, Texas and see what's going on with Starhopper and Starship. Number this many, we'll look into what happened to SpaceX's former cargo, the Space IL Lunar Lander. And number F, we'll wrap it up with today's honorable mention. Let's get started. So on Thursday evening, the Falcon Heavy took to the skies for only its second launch ever, and it performed normally. The rocket lifted off, the boosters separated, the second stage continued to burn, both Falcon side boosters landed perfectly just like last time. And unlike the previous flight, the center core landed on the drone ship, of course I still love you, making it a three for three hat trick. And of course the payload, the satellite Arabsat 6A, made it into geostationary orbit around the Earth successfully. Check them off the list one by one, the rocket did a flawless job. Now this was the first flight of the Block 5 version of Falcon Heavy, so it's even more incredible that this rocket had zero problems despite all the new hardware that was added. And it kind of gives you that feeling of what can't be done. Now I want to mention something else that was very interesting. Both fairing halves were recovered in the ocean by one of SpaceX's vessels, and Elon tweeted that they plan on reusing them for a later mission this year. So this could possibly mean that Mr. Stevens services are no longer required. But it would be interesting to learn how SpaceX plans on refurbishing these parts. Salt water does tend to do a lot of damage to these kind of materials. You know, I still remember perfectly clear my time in the Navy, we'd do these two mile open water ocean swims. And by the time we'd finish and get out of the water, our little CO2 cartridges that we would use to inflate our life vests in, in case of emergencies, as well as our K bars would be completely crudded over by saltwater exposure. And I remember having such a terrible time trying to clean those things off in preparation for our next inspections. So I can't imagine how tough of a time SpaceX is going to have with these huge fairings that they got to, you know, refurbish. But then again, they're a lot smarter than we were. This was another launch I streamed live on my channel and literally thousands of you decided to join me. And I just want to thank everyone who did. I really do appreciate it. And I think we had a lot of fun. And I do want to apologize to everyone who tried to tell me during that stream that Tim Dodd had mentioned me in his live stream. Cloud Liquor, I've seen a few of his videos um, and he does a great job. I guess that means we're friends now. And Tim Dodd is friends with Elon Musk. So it's so facto, I'm friends with Elon Musk. I think that's how it works, right? Okay, moving right along to our next topic. Next month, SpaceX is scheduled to launch its very first Starlink satellites into orbit around the Earth. This will mark the beginning of the company's Constellation program that will hopefully provide the planet with faster broadband services. And now that we've come to this point in time, SpaceX should begin mass production of these satellites if they haven't already. SpaceX will have to build and launch more than 2,200 satellites in the next five years, averaging 44 high-performance, low-cost spacecraft built and launched every month for the next 60 months. But SpaceX is definitely not alone with this idea. We've already learned in a previous episode that OneWeb is also going to do a Constellation project, but now Jeff Bezos has jumped into the ring. The MIT Technology Review tweeted out that Amazon plans to launch a massive constellation of more than 3,000 internet satellites. To wit, Elon replied, you copycat. Bezos' constellation idea is called Project Kuiper, and CNBC reported earlier this week that Bezos hired SpaceX's former vice president of satellites who led the Starlink project. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, now Facebook wants some. Yes, that's right. They are also reportedly developing an internet satellite of its own aimed at providing service to unserved and underserved areas. Yes, the future is exciting and it might be a little brutal. Now come, take a trip with me down to Boca Chica. Last week, we went over Starhopper's successful tether test with its Raptor engine. But just hours later, SpaceX technicians uninstalled Raptor's engine and proceeded to package it up for shipment to either McGregor, Texas or Hawthorne, California. As far as new information is concerned, it's like we've done a 180 since our last episode. Now we're back to less focus on Starhopper and more focus on the orbital Starship prototype. This vehicle has been confirmed by locals to be in five separate pieces now, but each piece is growing by the day. There are two body sections, two tapered sections, and a nose cone piece. The workers are still hard at it, and judging by the sizes of these pieces, this orbital prototype of Starship should be at a one-to-one -one scale. And something else that I personally found exciting is that NASA finally publicly recognized Starship's existence, tweeting that they checked with SpaceX if their new telescope concept can indeed fly on the vessel. With all this NASA talk lately of going back to the moon by 2024, it's about time they recognize the vehicle that's actually going to do it. Am I right? And Elon did respond back that the SpaceX team would be so honored to fly this for NASA. All right, so really quick. Do you remember a few months back when SpaceX launched Space IL's lunar lander toward the moon? Well, the vehicle finally reached its destination, snapping this selfie picture on the way down to the surface. The unfortunate thing is, is that after this picture was taken, the engine cut off, causing the craft to smash into the surface of the moon, going about 300 miles per hour. Well, we didn't make it, but we definitely tried. And I think that the achievement of getting to where we got 
is really tremendous. I think we can be proud. <clears throat> But before the moment of impact, it did manage to take one last picture. You know, I would call this a successful failure because even though it crashed on the moon, it still did hit the target. And even more than that, now there's gonna be a treasure trove of data to learn from. Okay, let's finish up with today's honorable mention. You probably could have guessed today's topic. We're gonna to cover the first picture ever taken of a black hole. Now, this picture was actually taken in 2017, and it wasn't just by one telescope. You'd have to have a telescope as big as the Earth to get this picture. Instead, they used several telescopes stationed around the planet, and it was the Event Horizon Telescope project that captured it. This black hole lurks at the heart of the elliptical galaxy M87, which is about 53 and a half million light years away. And what's interesting about the project's data is that there was so much of it that project members had to snail mail hard drives containing it to each other because the internet just isn't a viable means to transfer so much data. Now obviously this data will be dissected and analyzed for probably years to come, but according to researchers, so far the data collected does seem to support Einstein's theory of relativity without any needed tweaking. And despite popular opinion, and I did do my homework on this, this picture was not taken by any one person. It was a team effort done by about 200 people. So congratulations to everyone on that team. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative or entertaining or both. And if you did, please do me a favor and hit that like button. But just hit it once, don't hit it twice, because if you hit it twice, you're gonna undo your like, and I want it. And if you wanna make sure you catch all information in future episodes, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. They're around here somewhere. Thank you guys so much for watching. Godspeed.